Okay, so how is everyone today? Monday morning ish, afternoon, I guess. Math class. Here we go. So last time we were talking about inverse functions and we more or less concluded that. So now we're in section 5.1. <coughs> Uh, quadratic functions. Okay. So we've got to define what that is. A quadratic function is a function of the form f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c, and we need a not 0. So that is to say, a quadratic function is a function defined by a quadratic <coughs> expression. So that's part one. Part two is that the standard form is f of x is a multiplied by x minus h squared and then plus k. So we've got two ways to write a quadratic function. Uh, this way and that way. And one of the main things we're going to address today is how do you go back and forth between them. So supposing I give you the one, how do you produce the other? So back and forth. Okay, now the reason the reason why the standard form looks the way it does can be understood with transformations. So one notable thing I'd like for you to observe is that this is subtracting h, so minus h, whereas that one is adding k. So why, why make just decisions just so? Okay, so here's the reason. So we start out with the standard quadratic. So what is the equation for the standard quadratic? y is x squared. So that's the simplest possible one. Visually, it looks something like that. <clears throat> so now there's three things occurring in this standard form. There's the, there's the h, there's the k, and there's the a. So we're going to address these one at a time. So that is to say, for now, let's ignore the a and the k. And just look, what if we, d what if we uh, took the standard parabola and replaced all x's with x minus h's so that it looked in this way? Well, this is a transformation that we've studied. So in particular, you should be able to tell me from here to here, the transformation that, that's made. Is it horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Why is it most certainly horizontal? Yeah, because you're playing with the x's and not the y's. The y's are unchanged. The x's are changing. Then, since we've established that it's horizontal, is it a shift or a scale? It is a shift. 
What is your signal that it is a shift and not a scale? The subtraction. Shifts are adding and subtracting. Scales are multiplying and dividing. So, supposing that h is a positive number, then what this is doing is it's, it's shifting the whole parabola to the right. Because, if you like, you could say, well, another way to think of it is uh, you pin down that red parabola and grab the, grab the axis and pull the axis to the left by H. And that's what you see. Okay, so just the H part has that effect. So we're going to do the rest of them one by one, but what I want you to observe, we're going to keep track of one specific point. So we're going to because this point is going to have special importance in a moment. What are the coordinates of that point? That's 0, 0. That's the origin. And then after the transformation, that point, that blue point has moved to right there. What are its coordinates? H, 0. OK. So now let's do, instead of the H, let's do just the K. So I'm going to ignore the A and the H, and I'm just going to do the K. Which is to say, I'm going to consider Y is X squared, and then add K to it. Now, a little bit tricky of a, of a question. So from here to here, so starting with the standard parabola and then moving to here, that's a transformation. Is it a horizontal or a vertical transformation? Vertical. Vertical, that would mean that we're playing with the y's, but it looks to me as if we're playing with the x's. <coughs> Why is it that we're playing with the Y's? Right, that K can be moved up over to the other side so that it's properly associated with the Y's. And it could be expressed, this same transformation can be expressed as Y minus K is X squared. Now, I'd like for you to observe that this k in the standard form is on the right hand side. That's why it looks like plus k instead of minus k. That's the reason why it's plus instead of minus. Okay, so again, so this is a vertical transformation we established. Is it a shift or a scale? It's a shift because again because it's a, it's a subtraction. Then, again, so supposing that k is positive, that means that we're taking the parabola and moving it up. So it will look like this. So in particular, this blue point, all of the points of the parabola moved up by k, and that blue point will have moved up by k, and it will be right there. result will look like this. And what are the coordinates of this point? 0k. OK. So this, this h alone, what it does is it takes the standard parabola and horizontally shifts it. This k alone takes the standard parabola and vertically shifts it. So now we're going to ignore the h and the k and just focus on the a for a moment. But in order to understand what it's doing, we are going to have two possibilities now. So 
So the equation is y is equal to a x squared. And a has to be not 0. Otherwise, it's not a quadratic. So now, the movement from here to here is a transformation. What kind of transformation is it? Horizontal or vertical? Vertical. It's vertical. Why should it be vertical? Right, it's not in that squaring with the x. It's not in there. It's not, it, it is not itself being squared. So just like we moved, just like on this one, we moved the k to the other side, we're going to move the a to the other side by doing what? By dividing. <coughs> that is to say, y over a is x squared. Okay, so it's definitely a vertical transformation. It's definitely vertical. And then what's happening depends on a. So now what if a is a big positive number like 4? Then, then it's a vertical stretch. It would be like making this really pointy, like a alligator tooth or something like that. Really pointy. Uh, stretching it like this. What if a is positive but smallish, like a half? Yeah, then it kind of squishes it so that it so that it opens more widely. Okay, that's all fine. But what if a is negative? Then it's a vertical reflection, right? So, for example, if a is negative ten, then you'll take this and flip it down, and then stretch it by ten. Okay. So the two possibilities that we're going to draw is the possibility that it, it is when a is negative and when a is positive. So in the case when a is negative, it will look like this. And in the case when a is positive, it will look like this, possibly stretched out. So this blue point is here and here for these ones. And no notably, this scaling does not move that point. So these are still at 0, 0, still at 0, 0. So which one of these is when a is negative? The first one, right? So this is when a is negative, and the other one is when a is positive. So for the standard form, there were these three letters, H, K, and A. They correspond to these three things. A horizontal shift, a vertical shift, and a vertical scale. Now, what happens if we do all three of these at the same time? So if we do all three at the same time, <coughs> then the formula is y is a x minus h squared plus k. But for this specific formula, for this specific formula, it can be reorganized in the following way. We could move the k over to the other side so that it's with the y just like we did here. And then we could divide by a so that it's also with the y. And you would get the following. y minus k Gesundheit, over a is x minus h squared. So that what, this is what it looks like if you reorganize everything. <clears throat> and write it in the way that we're accustomed to doing it. So, 
The X's have been played with. They've been shifted over to H. The Y's have been played with. They've been shifted up to K. And then they've been further played with by being stretched out. <laughs> OK. So again, with the two possibilities, this blue point has been moved to there. And then this is the case you open down. And this is the case you open up. So what are the coordinates of the blue point in both cases? HK, because this blue point is at 0, 0 to begin with, and then you move it right H, and then up K. So it is, it is at HK in both cases. And this is the case when the vertical scale is negative, and this is the case when the vertical scale is positive. So every conceivable parabola can be obtained from the standard parabola by these three transformations. A horizontal shift, and a vertical shift, and a vertical scale. OK, terrific. So the fourth, so continuing that remark, summarize every quadratic can be exp can be broadly classified as being one of the two one of these two kinds of things like this or like this in either case the blue point is here and this blue point is significant enough that it has its own special name. It's called the vertex. Vertex. And its coordinates are at H, K. And in this case, the case on the left, this is when the vertical scale is what? A negative vertical scale. So that means that A is negative. And what I'd like for you to observe is, doesn't that look like a frowny face? And how about negative people? Are they smiling or frowning? <laughs> it's, ter it's terrible. Okay, and then this one, this is when A is positive. Look at that guy. He just came home and found that he had a hamburger or something, right? It's terrific. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so the negative case is down like a frown, and the positive case up like a cup. Lovely. Any question about this? So, for example, I could say let f of x be um, negative 3 x minus 2 squared, and then minus 4. So in the first place, I could ask, please express in the form uh, 
AX squared plus BX plus C. Which is to say, there's two forms like we wrote on the first page. There's standard form, which is what I gave you. And then there's this other form. And I want you to give, it, give me this other one. So how do you write this other one? go from here to here. Well, you just multiply it all out. Right? It says you gotta square all that and then multiply, <coughs> do do a bunch of algebraic manipulations. Okay. So f of x is negative three and then I want to perform this square. So what goes in there if when we square that. Uh huh. X squared minus 4x, minus 4x uh, plus, four. plus 4. Is there any question why squaring this binomial yields that? Okay, then we distribute negative 3. Uh, oops, distribute. Negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 12 minus 4. Negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 16. Okay. So does everyone see? Ah, we went from this form to that form. Okay. Now, I'm not asking the question. But understand that I could I could have phrased the question differently. I could have given you this one and said, please give me that one. So, in fact, we'll probably do that one next. So I want you to think about how would you do that? How would you go in the reverse direction? Okay. Ignoring that line of questioning for a moment. I could ask, well, what are the coordinates of the vertex? So in particular, what is H and what is K? So what's H? H is 2. But wait a minute, it looks like it looks like it's negative two. Right, it's x minus h all squared. So comparing the formula, so writing the formula down, ax minus uh, h squared plus k, and then comparing these two for pattern, h is two. Okay? Then what's k? negative 4. It's negative 4. So now, both of these are subtraction, right? That's subtract 2 and that's subtract 4. But this one is construed as positive because of the way the formula is written. Now, the reason why the formula is written in this way is because that's the transformation. And notice that, there, that that's a subtraction and that's a subtraction. But when you solve for y, then it looks like this. So the, the k is now positive. That's why it is, it is in this way. It's not some arbitrary choice. OK. Uh, and then 3, I could ask, well, does this have a min or a max? Which is to say, I want you to distinguish for me if you were to plot this quadratic and observe the following and observe the resulting parabola which shape would you observe? Yeah, 
you'd, you'd observe the one on the left. Why would you observe the one on the left? Because A is negative. So this is the case when A is negative, and this is the case when A is positive. And on this specific exercise, what is A? A is negative 3. Uh, so, as a result of this, we're going to have a maximum. Any question about this? Okay. So how about if I give you mm, S, so let, let S of X be, what did I write on the previous page? Okay, so 5X squared minus 20X plus 39. Okay, so first request, please give this to me in standard form. <coughs> Which is to say that I gave it to you in the second form, or, or, in, or in that form. Now I want you to give me the A times X minus HL squared plus K form. Okay, how do you do it? Well, we do need to do something like factoring, but factoring, factoring is not quite what we want. Factoring would, would tell us, in a sense, where the zeros are. But we don't really care where the zeros are. What we really care about is where the vertex is. So there is some other arcane sequence of operations that you know that, ac that actually has the effect of telling you where the vertex is. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to complete the square. Because that's what's been missing from our lives, right? <laughs> that's, that was the missing ingredient. Okay, fine. So complete the square. So to remind you, the way completing the square works is you group together all of the terms with x. and then exclude those without x. And we're going to complete the square on, on the terms that do have x. Now, when completing the square, we need the polynomial to be monic. So the thing, the thing that we've singled out, is it monic? It isn't. Please remind me, what does monic mean? Yeah, the leading coefficient being 1. Presently, it's 5. So how can we fix this? Take out 5. So then 5, and then x squared <coughs> minus 4x, and then plus 39 over here. OK, so we factored out the 5. And notably, the thing in the square parentheses is now monic. So now the trick is, is we're going to add 0. And the way we're going to do that is by adding some magic amount and then subtracting that same amount. So uh, if we were to add banana, then we'd subtract banana. What specifically are we going to add and then subtract? We're going to add We're going to add 4 and then subtract 4. And the, the, where that came from is that it's always going to be something over 2 squared. 
and then we're going to add that much <coughs> and subtract that much. And the something, the something is always this number. So the negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. You square that, you get 4. So we're going to add 4 and then subtract 4. If it had so happened that b was, say, 10, we'd take half a 10, which is 5, square that, it's 25, we would be adding 25 and then subtracting 25. Now that seems like an odd thing to want to do until you remember that, oh yes, the first three terms now factor as a square. How do these three terms factor? x minus 2, all squared. <clears throat> okay, so the hard work is over, but there's still work to do. So what, sh what do we need to do now? Distribute the 5. So that'd be 5 <coughs> x minus 2 squared, and then minus 20, and then plus 39. So that would be 5 x minus 2 squared, and then plus 19. So notably, we now have it in standard form. So I could ask to please tell me the coordinates of the vertex. H is 2, K is 19. Any question about why H and K are 2 and 19? Okay. Uh, this particular quadratic, does it have a min or a max? As a min, as a minimum. Now, why will it have a minimum? Right. There's the two shapes. They correspond to the two possible signs of the scale. This one, this one looks like a frown. And frowny people are negative, I suppose. And then positive. Okay, so what is A in this specific exercise? 5. So therefore, the shape is like this, and that has a minimum. <coughs> so, S of X can output a lot of things. Like if we plug in 100, you get 100 squared, that's 10,000, times 5, that's 50,000, something, something, something. What's the smallest value that S could, could, could ever output? So, if we were to plug in, say, 0, then that'd be 0, that'd be 0, and that'd be 39. So if you plug in 0, the, if the input is 0, then the output is 39. If you plug in 1, that'd be 5, minus 20 is negative 15, and then plus 39, that's 24. So if you put in a 1, input 1, the output is 24. What's the smallest value that, that S could possibly output? Zero. 19. That's the smallest it could possibly output. Oh, yeah. What value, what input do you need to provide so that you can get that minimal output? The h value. So that's, that's the minimum output, and that's the, that's the input that provides the minimum output. Because, because we established that this thing has a minimum. Its minimum occurs at 219. That's its vertex. And it's like this. I 
right? So this this function could never output a, a four. It just couldn't do it because that's way down here. It could. It also could not output a fourteen. But it could output uh, a twenty-four, or a or a twenty-four hundred. Any question about this? Okay. So now completing the square. So what if I told you that that uh, well in the first place. All of the exercises that I could possibly give you about quadratic functions can, can be solved by completing the square. But wouldn't it be nice if you could somehow not do that? <laughs> so there is a way, but it does come at a slight cost, and that is that you have to memorize a formula. Okay, So let's do that. So this is the vertex formula. vertex formula. So if I say let f of x be ax squared plus bx plus c with a not 0. Why do I need to require a not 0? So it's a quadratic. Right? <laughs> if a was 0, if a were 0, then wouldn't be a quadratic. So it wouldn't have a vertex, <laughs> right? Then we couldn't talk about the vertex formula. So what I'm going to do now is, in about that much space, and really quickly, I'm going to establish the formula for you. Now, I'm going to do it because I think it's useful for you to see how such things are figured out, but I'm going to do it quickly because I'm not going to ask you to reproduce it. So if you're trying to keep up and you have the impression that we're moving quite quick, then you're right. Okay? But the punchline is what I need you to remember. Okay, so I'm going to complete the square. So in the first place, because I want to complete that square, it's not monic, so I'll factor out the a <coughs> and obtain a x squared plus b over a x, and then I'm excluding the c because it's not, uh, it doesn't have any x's. So now I want to add something and subtract that same something. <coughs> so a and then x squared plus b over a x. And then I want to add half of that and squared. So that would be b over 2a squared and then subtract the same. So now the first three terms themselves are a square. So that's x plus b over 2a, all squared. So the first three terms became that. Now I'm going to distribute the exponent on this last term and get minus b squared over 4a squared. So that's distributing that exponent to numerator and denominator. Now I'm going to distribute this a n to, into the square parentheses to get a x plus b over 2a squared minus. Now when I distribute this a to there, it'll cancel with one of those a's, and we'll obtain b squared minus 4 a, uh, divided by 4a because one of them canceled. Now the, the two last terms they don't have any x's, so I'm going to combine them into a single term. a <coughs> x plus b over 2a squared minus b squared minus 2, I'll do the butterfly thingy, minus 4ac over 4a, and then a x plus b over 2a squared plus negative b squared minus 4ac over 4a. Now, so what I want you to witness is that I took, 
I took this formula and then did a sequence of operations and, and, and took it to here. And now you can compare it to the standard form and you should be able to tell me what H is in terms of A, B, and C. So what is the formula for H? Negative B over 2A. It's got to be negative, so it's B over 2A because of this. And it's got to be negative because the formula has X minus H. So negative B over 2A. And then what is the formula for K? Yeah, that whole thing there. right? So then negative B squared minus 4AC over 4A. One thing I'd like to point out is that this numerator right here, b squared minus 4ac, it's so common that it has its own, <coughs> its own given name. What's the name of that numerator? Discriminant. And I think it should be not surprising at all that the discriminant showed up again, because the discriminant showed up in the first place when we were establishing the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. And we, saw, we established that formula by completing the square. So it, it should make sense that if we took a quadratic function and then completed its square, that the discriminant should show up again. So that, that's all entirely reasonable. So the punchline is that you never have to complete the square again as long as you memorize these formulas. <laughs> And you might be looking at these formulas and think, I don't know, <laughs> maybe I will just go ahead and complete the square. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> actually, actually, what I'm going to show you is that you can get away with just remembering this one. Just this one. So if you can remember, if you can memorize negative b over 2a, that'll be enough. Okay? And you're, you're, you'll be free to use this sort of shortcut method so long as the question doesn't say, by completing the square. And I will give you one that says, <laughs> do it by completing the square. Yes? Why is it um, in the first iteration B over A? Here? Uh, where it's up. This one? So what would happen if you distributed this A in? Oh, if you just A X squared plus B. Yeah. If you, it, the B over A, that, that A would cancel with that A. Yeah. Okay. So, I could say something like, okay, here is uh, R of X is um, negative 2 X squared uh, plus... 24x minus, uh, I don't know, 13. So please put this in standard form. Now, because I've given no specific instruction as, as to how to proceed, you could just complete the square just like we did the last time, and it would work just as well as it did the last time. However, it's more expedient to do it in the following way. So please recall for me, what is the formula for the horizontal coordinate of the vertex in terms of A, B, and C? Negative B over 2A. Then, on this specific exercise, what is B? Twenty-four. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was saying. <laughs> ah, yeah. Twenty-four, and then two, and then what is a on this exercise? Negative two. So that's negative b over two a. Well, that's just some arithmetic, right? And it is six, as you said. So what that's saying is that the horizontal coordinate of the vertex is six. Now, for k, we could flip the page, fl flip to the previous page, and write down that other formula, negative discriminant over 4a. Or, well, because this is, the, this is the horizontal coordinate of the vertex, 
the input of the vertex, how do you get the output? By plugging it into there, right? So k is going to have to be whatever, whatever you get when you plug in what we just found. So you just found 6 relatively easily. Now just plug in 6 to there and see what happens. R of 6. So that would be negative 2 times 6 squared plus 24 times 6 and then minus 13. Well, let's see if I can do it. So that would be 36, negative 72. Uh, that would be two 72s, but positive, so that would be 72 and then minus 13. 59? Did I do it right? That's kind of rushing. Let's check that. Yeah, 59. Okay, so it didn't have to remember that other formula. and more or less could just use a calculator to do that. Now I claim that you actually have enough to write it in standard form, which is to say that the standard form for R, for that quadratic, looks like this, A, X minus H, all squared, and then plus K. Well, H and K are immediately above. What is A? It's negative 2, right? So the standard form is negative 2, X minus 6, squared, and then plus 59. Okay. Then I could ask, 2. Does this have a min or a max? It has a max. Why does it have a maximum? Yeah, because it has a negative scale. And negative people are frowning. And then imagine that frowny face in your mind's eye. Does it have a minimum or a maximum? It has a maximum. So then, three, I could say, uh, I could say, what is the maximum? So what is the maximum output? And what input gives this maximum output? So what is the maximum output? 59. And is it is obtained at input what? Six, because what what this standard form is saying is it's saying take the standard parabola, which has vertex at zero zero, move that vertex over to six, right right six, and then move it up fifty nine, and then scale it, make it make the thing twice as tall, and then turn it upside down. That's what all this is saying. So that if you were to look at a drawing. It looks like this. Interesting. OK, now what's going to happen is that I'm going to give you exercises where it's some sort of contrived but otherwise real life scenario, where I could say something like, suppose your profit is given by, as in monies, suppose your profit is given by the following quadratic. Please maximize the profit. Which is, which is just a roundabout way to say, find the vertex of this quadratic. Uh, then I could say, OK, well, suppose that your cost is given by this other quadratic. What, what kind of thing do you want in a business scenario? What do you want to do with cost? You want to minimize your cost, right? That's the legitimate business concern. I could say, now I want you to minimize your cost, which is, a, which is 
an altogether roundabout way to say what? Find the vertex. <laughs> or I could say, suppose that you, that you throw a ball and the height as a function of time is given by the following quadratic. All trajectories of, of balls, at least if you ignore air resistance and gravity's constant, which is, which is good enough for, for little bitty human beings compared to big old Earth. Then I could say, find, if you throw a ball, by the way, does it have a maximum height or a minimum height? If a human being throws a ball, right? Not, not like a rocket. They have a maximum height, right? Alternatively, I could say a different question, a conceptual question. I could say, here is a, here's a quadratic that gives the trajectory of a particle. Is it conceivable that this is the trajectory of a ball thrown by a human being? What conceptual question am I asking? Max. Does it have a maximum, right? Which is to say, if you threw a ball, it simply must have a maximum, right? It would be utterly surprising if you threw the ball and then it, and then it came to a minimum height and then just whoop, straight, <laughs> straight out into orbit in this space, right? It doesn't work that way. Okay, good. So have a nice Monday.